Wow, I'm not even gonna acknowledge the fact that I'm back with another portable clint. But I got a very cool guest. I've always thought this girl was very funny and she happens to be uh, the girlfriend, is that right? To a, to, to a very great friend of mine, Craig Anstead. Here he is, Maria Blasucci. Did I say it right? Yeah, but you said here he is. See, I was so worried about the he, like the boyfriend, girlfriend thing. Here she is. Look. Um, look at this. How are you? I'm good. Look at this. Okay. So How are you? Fantastic. Here's the deal. I'm interviewing all journeymen and women of uh, of Hollywood, and this girl, right? Is do I call you girl or what's what's the what's the correct thing? This girl's good. Because you are a girl. Sure. I mean, and you know. Okay. So. I'm going to be interviewing Maria because she just does not do one thing in Hollywood. That's right. You do, how many things do you think you do in Hollywood? Can you just start naming them right now, please? Okay, well, I write. Get in here, sister. Oh, sorry. I write, I act, I produce, I've directed once, um, and I've done a lot of other things. I've had a lot of little jobs and stuff, but those are the, the Hollywood ones. Okay, you've actually kind of, in a way, been my boss before. That's right. She wrote a a uh, she wrote a web series with your writing partner. What's her name? Amanda Lund. Amanda Lund. And Jeremy Connor. Two very talented ladies, and Jeremy Connor is very talented guy. But I'm talking about the two ladies right now. You have a uh, a partner in crime. Amanda. Yeah. Amanda, tell me everything that you guys are partner with. What do we partner? Well, well we, wrote Go, we wrote Ghost Girls, which was a series on Yahoo Screen. Okay. Which Clint was on. Thank you. Thank he you. He was, and Jeremy knew, I didn't know you at the time. I didn't know you and at the Jeremy time. Jeremy said, I know who would be good at this part, which is, was a guy just sitting on a toilet. And then as he's down the toilet, all these bubbles start rushing in. And he said, I know the perfect guy for that. It was Clint. Well, thank Yeah, well, thank you. Okay. But here's the thing, and I'm not just saying this, but the reason why I wanted you on here is because I remember you and Amanda like really being talented and funny and cracking me up. And really? I was so impressed with you girls because y'all worked so well yeah, together. we do work well together. It's a yin and a yang. Mm -hmm. do, now, do you guys like give each other pep talks? Is like one of you guys go through a hard time and you guys help each other out? Or do you guys ever even talk about if you're going through a hard time in Hollywood? We're usually going through about the same thing at the same time. I mean, sometimes one of us will book something, one of us won't, but that's all good. I mean, I don't think there's ever any, you know, we do a lot of stuff on the same level, the okay. same time with each other. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, whoever whoever gets up there first, whereas the other person's going to be riding the coattails. Amen, sister. That's awesome. Now, you guys do a podcast together too, yeah, right? Yeah, the big ones. The big ones. And did you buy your own podcast company or something? Or? We're creating our own podcast network. And, okay. Oh, I didn't say that in what I do in Hollywood. Well, there's something, yeah, that's that's the thing about Portable Clean. You get everything. Yeah, huh? sure do. Okay, there's a guy walking around with an 8-track player just listening to music. Now, the thing about Maria is she just doesn't, she's just not in the entertainment business. She holds records doing right. something. Yeah. See, that's yeah, what I, I like. I am doing pretty okay. Yeah, you are. Tell them what you hold the record in. Uh, is it, would it be a world record? World record. Okay, go ahead. I have the world record on a 1982 video game called Ant Eater. Ant Eater. How did you find this game to break the record? Like, is it, where is this game? Uh, Craig, my boyfriend, had it in our living room connected to a big Donkey Kong machine. He had a, a circuit board that he can connect into the big Donkey Kong machine with different games. And one of those games was Ant Eater. And so he was putting different ones in and he was going like, do you like this one? Do you like this one? And then Ant Eater came on. I was like, I'm actually pretty good at this. I like this one. And so then after months of practice, I got the world record. But now who's like checking this record out? Like, is it connected to a, a world system or how did you yeah, find out you broke the world record? Twin Galaxies is the, like the company, like the arcade company that looks at, 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 at everyone's record scores. It's like very uh, efficient. Like you have to show them the circuit board isn't messed with or anything like that. They've been around since the 70s, and so it's the, it's the hub for world records in arcade games. And you went to a presentation over this or something? No, I didn't. But I you, was, there's a picture of you? There's a picture of me 
holding um, uh, the guys from Twin Galaxy hold, holding my certificate. Yeah. Okay, all right. Enough of the video games. Let's get back to Hollywood. Okay. Tell me about, you grew up in this business, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Who, who and how? Who was my dad and how? He just made it happen. He was uh, a writer and a, a, a producer, showrunner. On what, on what? Um, I guess most, well, he was on SCTV, he was on the Tracy Allman show, he was on Mad TV, he was on a show called Phenom. I don't know if you've seen it, but it was one of my favorite shows ever. Okay. It's really good. And did you always go to the set when you were a little kid? Uh-huh, Muppets Tonight, he was on, he did that. And he always brought you, or, or did you have to beg him? How did that work no, out? No, always went. Like, Friday nights were taping nights, so we'd go and we'd hang out. <laughs> I mean, that'd be so much fun. I would just love it that so, so much, much. It was so much fun. Okay, so when did you actually get in front of a camera? I was in the uh, the pilot for Phenom, my brother and I. They were doing, uh, it, was, it took place at a tennis um, club and so we were in like the promo video for someone watching a promo video of the tennis club okay and your brother is also in the business he's a writer on family guy yeah okay does eric filipkowski ever reach out to you to tell him to hook him up with a job um i will neither confirm nor deny okay i don't know why i just thought of that okay <laughs> no he hasn't reached out to me no but i know he's a fan of he is a big fan yeah. of that Okay, so when did you start wanting to do your own thing? Um, hmm, what do you How, mean? <laughs> well, I'm saying, okay, you were an actress and you kept bringing, okay, so like you... When I wasn't getting roles. Okay, that's what, okay, that's yeah. what I want. That's what I want. Because this is all about the journeyman and women, just like I said, but it's about what you're going through to get there. Mm -hmm. So I want to know about that with you. Give me, give me something like, where did you find Amanda for you to hook up with her? Well, Amanda and I were in college together. We met freshman year of college doing a play together. What college you guys go to? Loyola Marymount University. Okay, the I've heard of it. It's a Jesuit institution in um, Marina Del Rey area. Okay. It's really nice. Okay. It's a beautiful campus. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we were doing a play together called Picasso's Little Panagio, the Steve Martin play. Did Steve Martin ever come to watch you no. guys do it? No. Okay. But I imagine he got word He got of word it. of it? Yeah. Okay. And so we met there, and then we just became friends, and then we decided our senior year, we were living together, we were like, let's just um, start making our own stuff on YouTube, because YouTube was relatively new. Right. So we started um, creating these little shorts called Little Mysteries with our friend Andy DeYoung, okay. who's now a director of lots of things. Really? He did pen, the, a couple episodes of the show Pen15. He's done AP Bio episodes. I was on AP Bio just recently. Was Andy your director? I have no idea. No, he was not, by the way. Right. Okay, go ahead. And anyway, so we started doing that. And then um, um, then we met Jeremy, did Ghost Girl. So it was just kind of like a, we just started filming our own stuff very... Uh, Gorilla style. Okay, what is the best gig you've ever done in Hollywood? Best gig I've ever done in Hollywood. I mean, because. What do you mean? Best? I don't know, but, but that's just or am it. I to define best. Well, you're to define best. Like, was it. See, because I would love to be a writer and create something like mm -hmm. you did with Ghost Girls. Yeah, that was probably the best in that it was ours, it was cool to like write something and then someone like build something that you wrote. See, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Or like someone go like, I have this prop that you wrote in this, and then you're like, whoa, I wrote that and then it appears like magic. That is awesome right there. Yeah, it really was. We're like, oh, well, now we have to go to the location scout because I wrote that it's in this thing, it's in this place that we need to go to. So cool. It is. Yeah. What is your end game? What if, if they go, all right, Maria, you got to pick one thing. What would the one thing be for you to end up with? Like, is it directing, writing, starring, acting? What is it? It's prob it's acting. I love acting. I always wrote to, supplement, to, to, to be able to write for myself because I learned very early on that I wasn't going to be knocking them out of the park in those auditions. Okay. All right. So I had to create my own content. So I did writing to supplement my love of acting and i don't know how much i can get into this but you have worked on major motion picture mm -hmm. as a writer one being um with seth 
Seth Rogen, Seth yeah, Rogen Neighbors, uh, too, Neighbors yeah. Part Two. Yeah, it's really how did, rising. Yeah, how did he how did he find you to hire you to come in and punch up the script? We went in for a round table, which is when you go in with a bunch of other writers before the, the film is in uh, production. You go in and you, you, as a table of writers, you kind of go over the script. And Are you getting paid right then with the, with the getting, round table? Yeah, you get paid for a round table. Okay. So you go in and you sit around this table literally with like... 10 other writers and you go through the script and the director's there and the writers are there and they go like what can we fix what's not working and you literally spend a day just breaking the script down and telling them what they need to fix what doesn't work pitching jokes to them whatever so we did that for neighbors two and then it was about a sorority so i think after the table read it was an all it was an all female I think round table because they wanted female perspectives and after the table read they were like oh I think we need more female perspectives for on set and so then I think the director was out to dinner with our friend Priyanka Matu who produced Ghost Girls and she said well why don't you just have Marie and Amanda do it and he was like oh yeah they were at the table reading Nick the director had known Amanda from a pilot she had done and so then we got brought in and to help rewrite the script and uh, uh, with a bunch of other awesome people uh, that had been working on it forever. We were just kind of like brought in to be like, yes, no. And then we went to Atlanta and shot it with them. It was awesome. Did you get anything written in? Did you, are you, mm -hmm. can you say this, that, that's my part right there? Yeah. What, give me something from... I don't know. Is that not... I don't know if that's like kosher to do. I don't either. So let's not do that. But I'll tell you off air what oh. what I said. Okay. By the way, I think you told me one time this is the reason why I'm I remembering... I did. Because yeah. off camera, I tell everything. Yeah, I know. I know. But you're right. I don't even know what's cool and what's not cool to say. Um, well, okay. I don't know. Like when we were on set, I you, you'd give jokes. You'd write a joke. You'd write... They'd do the scene and then you'd have pieces of paper. This is how the director wanted it you write down jokes that they could say the next time they did it. And then you'd collect everyone's pieces of paper that were at Video Village, and then you'd hand them to the director, and then you wouldn't be there, but you'd see him kind of look through everyone's and then keep the ones you liked. And then in the next take, you'd hear if your joke made it. Oh, okay. And where, while everyone else was very, you know, if their joke made it, they wouldn't do anything. I would, was the only one that would always go like, that was mine. Nice, Every nice. Every single time. Nice, good, you I should. I needed it to be known. Yeah, no, hey, I hear you. I, I'd be, I'd still be telling everyone. And Amanda I'd be, kept going, you can't, you're not supposed to be doing that. And I <laughs> said, well, I don't know what to tell you. That was my joke. How often do you do your podcast? Once a week. Why do you do a podcast? good question no I mean like I'm doing this but I'm doing this and I'm, I'm I'm finding out that I just like to interview people just to hear how they do it mm -hmm. and then I'm thinking well why am I doing this and I'm just kind of hoping you would fill it in you for do me it on video which is a lot more pressure yeah but I, I but I I'd rather have that pressure than like yeah so okay our first guest today because right. I did I listened to a podcast today and I was bored in five minutes was because, it mine I'm not going to say, because listen, I don't know if that's cool. No, yeah. it was not. It was not yours. Right. Oh, uh, tell me the name of yours again. The, the big, big ones? ones. Why the big ones? Because they're about life's big dilemmas. It's all, we invite a guest on and we give them a big moral dilemma and then we discuss it. Like, would you kill your baby to save a village? Would you? That's the question. Would I? Would you? Yeah. Well, the, you have to listen to episode one to hear that. But because it, you can't just say it off the bat. You have to talk it out because you're like, well, of course not. But then you talk it out and then you go, but 20 other people are going to die. Maria, what are you working on right now? What's the project you're working on? What did you wake up to work on today? Uh, my hair. Oh, okay. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, today I broke up, woke up to work on... Uh, <laughs> I haven't been working... I did a podcast, so we're starting a podcast network, so I recorded a podcast for someone else for our network. So I did that, but Amanda and I just wrote a screenplay that we are, now have to do another draft of. Why do you have to do another draft? Did someone say, hey man, you need, you need to do another draft, or, or that's just the way it is? Someone said, someone read it and loved it and said, hey, we might be interested in making this, maybe, but you need to change a few things. So we said, okay. I'm going... What's your other big project now? Do you I you this other thing uh it's called um what is it called? Like drunk something. Drunk history. Drunk history. I think my I know I mean I know all about it, but my daughters have played oh, yeah, they've played, have played my daughters. Yes. My daughters have played your my daughters have played your daughters. Mm -hmm. Maybe twice. 
Is that is that the funnest gig because yeah. because every time you show up to work you're working with another gigantic celebrity. Right. No, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. And it's cool cuz every day you get new costumes, you know? Yeah. You get new a new era. You get a new completely different storyline. And are you comfortable on that set because you know the directors, you know the creator? I mean like is it is do you just do you ever sweat it out on there? Do you ever get nervous? No, no. Never. Uh-oh. I wish I would have that. I'm nervous really? on... Yeah, I mean... Well, no, I, but I think that's good. I think it's maybe a little unhealthy to, you know, be eating Cheeto, like, hiding Cheetos under the table when I'm supposed to be. You know, like, yeah. I'm not... I'm not sweating it at all. When you have to mouth something, do you rehearse that the night before, or are you doing it right before you go out there? Usually it's the morning of... Unless it's, like, I have the scene first thing in the morning. And depending how long it is. If it's, like, a long thing, then I'll usually start earlier but usually it's the day of that i'll start doing it okay all right we're gonna start winding this down okay really? yeah Already? i know it goes by really quick tell me this if there's a if there's a lady out there 30 years old living in delaware wanting to come out here what would you tell her to wanting to do what you did kind of like Kind of like do a couple of different things. Well, I mean, did you? Would you tell her to stay back there or to say no. come on? What would you tell her? <laughs> I, Remember, she's from Delaware. She's from Delaware. Beautiful. State. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'd say you know what? You got to make your own stuff, and you got to find a community of people to make that stuff with. And so you can't assume you're going to come out here and just everything's going to fall in your lap. Nothing's going to fall in your lap. In fact, you're going to shout from the rooftop saying, I need something, I need something, and it's going to be an abyss of nothingness. Yeah. So what you need to do is then from your, um, you know, the edge of disparity, you need to then take the rocks around you and build your own hut. You know what I mean? Hey, I like that a lot. Um, Maria, you are, you. we are kind of in the same community of friends, which... I would have never have I would have never have gone into a community, but I joined Second City, and then that's where I met Derek and uh, Craig, Craig being your boyfriend, Craig Anstead, and that was literally the best thing I ever did. Yeah. So I'm saying all that to say the community you surround yourself with it's is important. It is so important. Well, that's what I think. Like even if you're not into comedy, even if like doing something like improv gets you around people who like are excited to create you yes know what I mean? yes and it's not necessarily about like oh i don't want to be a comedian it's like no you're around people that literally just want to create stuff yes and it's different than being in an acting class because those you know when you're in an acting class it's great too and you learn a lot of stuff there but it's very everyone's kind of like in for themselves and like doing this where you get to places like second city how io west was it's rest in peace but um or Brownlings or, or UCB. It's these places where people are just like itching to create stuff constantly. And that's the best thing about Derek and, and Craig. When they were when we were doing stuff, they were always ready. Yeah. Always. That's the thing. You call people up and you're just like, hey, we used to film these things called Little Mysteries. And we would just like call people up and be like, could you just come to this our apartment? We're filming this thing. One thing called Pregnant Detectives, which is one of my favorite things that's still on YouTube. Just type in Pregnant Detectives. Okay. It's really good. What's the funniest thing you've heard in the last 72 hours? Um, I, well, I watched that guy watching the Star Wars trailer. Yes. Did Craig send yes, that to he, you? he sent it to me. I've been watching that for like two days straight. Tell them what it is. It's a guy just responding. It, it's his reaction to seeing the first preview of the new Star Wars yeah, movie coming out. Yeah, it's this guy who's just, he can't believe his eyes. And every beat in the trailer that, like, the trailer editors wanted him to feel, he feels, and he feels with more emotion than I'll ever feel in my entire life. Do you and Craig have fun at night just watching stupid videos and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We've been watching American Idol. I've been forcing him to watch American Idol. Okay. Maria, will you do me a favor? Uh -huh. Will you tell everybody goodbye? Bye.